Let's talk about the Knicks blowout win in the Queen City over the Hornets with Knicks fan TV host Alex Chateris. My man. Hey, first and foremost, I ain't seen you in a long time. Happy New Year. Thanks for hopping on with us, my guy. Uh, act one, scene one of Life Without Julius Randle popped off last night. No OG as well, but them Villanova boys say, hold my beer. Jalen Brunson and Dante DiVincenzo combined for 60. I know it was the Hornets. I probably could have got like three points against them. But what were your biggest <laughs> takeaways from the night? I'm a spot-up shooter, man. I'm spot-up three-shooter, bro. There we go. That's what we need, man. I need to have you uh, join my team for some runs. Uh, but happy new year to you, Brandon. And, yeah, it's been a minute. But, look, last night it was a great win for the New York Knicks, man. I mean, they took care of business. They went down to the Queen City, as you said, took care of the Hornets. They didn't have a mellow ball, no Gordon Hayward, but no problem for the guys because we were without our top guys, and OG Ananobi and Julius Randle. And we still can't forget about Mitchell Robinson, who's been out too. But nonetheless, you see that you have the Nova boys who were just showing out last night. And the biggest takeaway for me, man, for this game is that we have quality depth. The fact that you can go in there without Julius Randle, without OG Ananobi, who was dealing with a sore elbow yesterday, and you can go out there and still put up 113 points and hold the, the Charlotte Hornets to under 100, that's a great achievement for a team that's missing some good players right now. And on top of that, you got to give a shout-out to Precious Achua, who got the late nod to being a starter last night, did a good job guarding Bridges, so you got to give him a shout out as well. Um, even though for his questionable starts, not questionable starts, but his like per curious uh, play to start off with, he's been playing really well, and you got to give him a shout out too for stepping up in big moments. But quality depth is the big overall for this thing, man. Pressure showing out as a, as a power forward for the New York Knicks, and look, even when he was playing center and you had Josh Hart on the floor, he had a great Great show for him as well. So I'm sure a lot of guys probably graded out in the positive. A lot of guys had strong performances last night. But as you know, man, winning masks everything. I know both teams had their stars down or out last night. So did you see anything in terms of coachable moments that Tibbs may want to address to this team that could possibly get them beat in the future against better teams? I think the one thing is looking at that second unit is that you see how Jalen Brunson is able to get downhill easily and get to the teeth of the defense and just have them collapse and he can just, you know, pass the ball out to guys like Dante DiVincenzo who can shoot a three or pass it out to Josh Hart who can then get out a curl and just attack the basket. You're going to need that same type of thing from the second unit. You're going to need Miles McBride or just figure out some way to get this team going downhill with that second unit because as you saw last night when Jalen Brunson was out in the fourth quarter, it started to get a little bit, of, uh, started to get a little dicey towards the end of the game where Brunson did have to come back in and then make sure that the Knicks were able to secure that win. So for any for moving forward, you're going to need this Knicks second unit to figure out how to get downhill without Jalen Brunson because you got guys who can shoot. McBride's been shooting well. Grimes can get uh, his shot going too at times. You saw Dante was out there, but Dante's not really a guy who's always going to be you know, in the half court, getting downhill. So figuring out how to get downhill while guys are on the bench, especially Jalen Brunson, is going to be a big key factor moving forward. Oh, he's a key factor. That man is, he's him in the city. That guy can do no wrong, and especially being someone that when they sign him, a lot of people, a lot of content creators were like, huh, questioning that, 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 that move when they brought him in. So with what he's been able to do in the year, year and a half that he's been here, is it safe to say that Jalen Brunson has arrived in the eyes of this fan base? And what's he got to do to get the keys to the city and kind of hit that mellow status? Mm. Well, you know, I was a big. I liked the idea of signing Jalen Brunson before he joined. The, <clears throat> before he joined the Knicks, I didn't call you out. I didn't call you out. I didn't. I didn't no, say I'm just you. you know, I didn't say you. I didn't say you. I'm just making sure that I'm out there saying that I did like the idea of signing <laughs> Jalen Brunson. All right, and I want to just. I just want to let you know, like, I like what I like the footwork, just what he was showing down in Dallas, and how he was able to create his own shot. But yeah. coming to New York, especially last year. You know, as you said, he is him. Okay, you watch him how he played against the Miami Heat in that playoff series. How he was able to drop over 40 points in a game six against a tough Miami Heat defense. Keep in mind, that same Miami Heat defense and team that went to the NBA Finals last year, they didn't have a solution for Jalen Brunson, and he showed it again this past weekend on Saturday against that same team, and he showed it again against that Denver Nuggets team. He has arrived. Okay, Brandon, like, this is Jalen Brunson. He's a superstar. There's no question about it. I thought he was a superstar by the way he was able to perform in the playoffs last year because a for him, the fact that you can't really have an answer to stop him, he can get to all of his spots and he makes his teammates better. That's what you want to see from your superstar and to shine in bright moments where it's a tough game, right? You talk about him shooting in the clutch. 
He's one of the best shooters when it comes down to the clutch moments, which is five minutes or less in the fourth quarter. You want to talk about elevating that team? He does that. Last night, you don't have Julius Randle. You don't have OG Ananobi. No problem. He goes out there, scores 32 points, and said, I'll take care of this. I'll make sure that my team gets the win in these moments. That's how you know you have a superstar team. To get the keys to the city, you know, I just feel like he just has to constantly be successful, man. Just constantly get to help lead this team get to the playoffs. He's on that path right now if he doesn't have the keys already. But in order for him to have the keys to the city, if that's the, if that's the question, uh, just constantly being good, man. He, he's great. He makes it look easy, which just tells you how much work he puts in to make it look that easy. Players play. Coaches coach. These dudes are playing so well that Tibbs got a standing ovation on the road. We always hear people say, trust the process in this business. Was that ovation uh, the fan base's way of saying, in Tibbs we trust? I think so. I'm not going to say, mm. I, I think there, I think it's, I think so. I think yes, it's in the culture in the grittiness in the defensive identity that Tom Thibodeau has established. But I also think it's not only like saying, Hey, thank you, Tom Thibodeau, which fans should be saying, okay. He's made this team very respectable. Look, they're tied right now for third when it comes to Eastern conference standings, you got to give respect to Tom Thibodeau for how he has turned this franchise around, you know, but I think it's also just saying, thank you. Thank you just for like being a good team that we can get behind and root for. And even when we're down our top guys, they still go out there and perform. And, of mm -hmm. course, that goes to Tom Thibodeau and how he has these, these guys prepared, whatever he's telling them to get amped up for that game. I mean, think about it. The way that they all went out and approached the game last night, it did, they didn't miss a beat. So, yes, I think it's for Tom Thibodeau, but I also think it's also saying, like, thank you, New York Knicks, for being as good as you are. And, like, look, we have a legitimate team at this point. You know, you have to fear this team. Uh, every time you come to Madison Square Garden or every time they're on the road, it's not a team that you can say, oh, we could take it easy. You got to come out and give your best A game in order to face the New York Knicks. Tibbs, he didn't give you roses, but he gave you flowers. Those are those are, those are tulips. I give you, he, you, you gave him <laughs> some tulips on that one. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, Dante DiVincenzo said, quote, every road game feels like a home game for us. Are the Knicks back? And can they make a deep playoff run? Are the Knicks back? The Knicks are back to being a good, respectable team, like I said. This is a team that you have to fear whenever you face them at all, okay? They got a great home record right now, which wasn't the case last season. You are talking about a team that, that defensively, even without our top guys, like I said, they held the horns to under 100 points. Since the OG Ananobi trade, they've been holding most of their opponents to under 100 points per game. You look at how they just have the good depth on the bench right now by just everyone just taking a step up, especially Miles McBride. Uh, you, like I said, you got Precious as well. And Josh Hart's been playing well as of late as, uh, uh, also. So you just watch how these Knicks play. It just says that there's not going to be an easy night whenever you face this team. And they are back, okay? They are back to the sense that where you got to say, all right, this team could make some noise in the playoffs. The way that they're playing right now, I know it's against the Charlotte Hornets. Like I said, they didn't have Lamelo Ball. They don't have Gordon Hayward. But still, the fact they can go out there and take care of business in the, in the fashion that they did, that's a legitimate team with some quality depth, and I think they're back. Man, me and my son's mother, we can't agree on the baby food and, and changing diaper schedules, but we can agree that Brandon London Jr. is going to grow up a Knicks fan just because of this, this run right here alone, man. So... Either I'm I'm a, I'm experienced the highs with you guys, but I'm gonna be there for the lows with you guys as well. But we're not gonna see that anytime soon. Alex, tell the people they can find you, my man. Brandon, always good talking next with you. Thank you for having me on as always. They can find me over at Knicks Fan TV. Make sure to go support the show and hit that thumbs up button for your boys. All right. Hey, appreciate you hopping on with us, man.